Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. Here, we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the tools and packages that will help skyrocket any Web3 dev's potential. For some of these, just knowing about them is enough to solve a problem that you might be dealing with. And if you're not a dev yet, no problem, because you can look into these yourself, or you can join my Web3 Bootcamp by enrolling in the link below before tomorrow to let me hold your hand as I teach you all about Web3 development and creating front-end user interfaces for back-end smart contracts. Let's dig in. The first two tools that we're going to be going over are IDEs. Now, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a tool that helps developers develop. Essentially, IDE is a software that gives developers tips and tricks to improve their code and see all of their files. But most importantly, some IDEs actually let you run and test your code. First up is Remix. Remix is an IDE that can actually be used inside a web browser. In fact, I do most of my smart contract development inside of a web browser using Remix. Remix allows you to write any Ethereum code, it tells you errors about it, shows you warnings, and you can even deploy a smart contract straight through Remix itself. They also have something called a virtual machine, which is just a fancy way of saying a fake blockchain where you can test your smart contracts without deploying them for real money. This is the main tool that we use in the first four weeks of the Web3 Portfolio Builder Bootcamp, which like I said earlier, you can enroll for the next few days in the description below. Another IDE is Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is an IDE that I specifically use for the creation of the front end or the user interface of decentralized applications. It also tells you about errors and warnings and lets you easily move between different files that you're editing. Visual Studio has a ton of plugins that you can add from autocomplete to a plugin that makes your code look really clean. And you can basically create any theme that you can imagine. Visual Studio is very powerful and is used all the time outside of web Three development. Next, let's move into blockchain tools. The next set of tools include software that allow you to test smart contracts in many different ways. Instead of using a real blockchain, which takes real money to deploy contracts and could be costly to test on, we can create our very own blockchain to test our code with. This way, the cost of an error is very low in comparison. First off, let's talk about Ganache. Ganache lets you launch your own personal Ethereum blockchain right on your own computer. This blockchain is not available outside of your computer though, but you can use this virtual blockchain to test smart contracts on or build any application that you want to build. Next up is Truffle. Truffle lets you test your smart contracts and claim that they have world-class debugging. They also had the first mover advantage by being one of the first blockchain tools to hit the market. Finally, we have Hardhat. Hardhat is another blockchain tool that can help you compile your smart contract and lets you run and test your Solidity code locally. They're also known for having a ton of features and plugins. In fact, many people who said they've tried Truffle and Hardhat say they enjoy Hardhat better. And I kind of do want to differentiate these. I want to say that Ganache lets you test your own blockchain, but Truffle and Hardhat give you tools and debugging scripts. Next, let's go over some packages. These are technically a bunch of code that someone else has written with the permission for us to use and build upon. Now these are insanely useful for starting a project within a few days. You do have to be very careful using these packages though, because a malicious developer could make a great tool, then you'll start using it, and then they could include an update that includes malicious code, which now your project will inherit. But let's get in and talk about ethers.js. Ethers.js is a package that allows people using JavaScript to be able to ask questions and give things to the blockchain with just a few lines of code. Without ethers, it would probably take hundreds of lines of code and tons of testing to be able to do something as simple as just ask the blockchain for a number or even just send some eth from one account to a contract. Ethers makes Web3 development so easy. Next, we have Web3.js. Technically, Web3.js is older than Ethers, but it's not as simple. Most people are starting to switch to Ethers from Web3 due to its simplicity. Either way, Web3.js is still widely used in many projects and does what it says it'll do, allow you to read and write to blockchains that you want to. The last package we have is from OpenZeppelin. OpenZeppelin is basically a company that specializes in stuff like audits and smart contract security, and they get paid a ton for it, but they also give away a bunch of free audited code for people to build with. This is basically free advertising for them. But if you want to make a token or maybe create an NFT project, using pre-configured code from OpenZeppelin can help you launch both of these projects in under an hour, at least if you know what you're doing and you want to. My hat's off to OpenZeppelin for giving us great, clean, and very useful contract frameworks to build upon. 
The next two things I'm going to be talking about are for building front ends. Now technically, these are just regular Web2 tools that anyone can use to build a Web2 website, but let's dig in. React is a JavaScript framework that allows us to create front-end web applications, basically a website. React by itself is a very powerful Web2 framework that tens of thousands of developers already use to create beautiful applications. Combining React with Web3 is very easy, and that's why it's the language of choice for most of the projects that we're going to be creating together in my Web3 Portfolio Builder Bootcamp. React has the ability to re-render a web page based on state changes, unlike other front-end tools, which which makes it reactive and very useful when displaying information that comes in from the blockchain, which may change often. It's very similar to JavaScript. Next up, we have Next.js. Next.js is kind of an add-on to React, but instead of your web browser rendering and creating the code, it's done on the server and then given to your web browser. This isn't really needed to build a Web3 app, but the benefits of this include much faster page loading, and it also allows bots to better understand your page, whether it be for social media information or search engine optimization purposes. That's kind of advanced and probably requires a whole other video. Let's keep moving and talk about APIs. APIs stand for Application Programming Interface. This means that they are basically a middleman between us and a blockchain. Since it would take a lot of work to organize with the information on a blockchain, to be able to ask it questions or to look up a specific transaction, we can utilize these middle parties, or these APIs, to do it for us. First up is Infura. Now, Infura lets developers scale with easy access to blockchains like Ethereum and a cloud-based data storage protocol called IPFS. In fact, Uniswap and Compound are two dApps that actually use the Infura network to help their application work. Next up is Morales, and if you're developing any Anything in the space of Web3, you've probably heard about Morales. Morales is a fast-growing API that was started by YouTube's own Ivan on Tech. It's been growing very quickly, and I believe their main customers are enterprise companies. They have built very useful APIs for Ethereum and Solana, including information about NFTs and token data. Last, we have Alchemy. Now, Alchemy claims that it's an entire Web3 development platform, and many people use it to get simple information about the blockchain, of which includes MakerDAO, Meta, and even OpenSea. They have APIs for a ton of blockchains, and I found them referenced a ton in Stack Exchange questions. Lastly on this list, we're going to be listing some general Web3 tools. I'm going to share some commonly visited websites that are just useful for all kinds of Web3 development things. First up is Etherscan. Etherscan is what is called a blockchain explorer. They basically take the blockchain and display it as a website so that we can search for things on the blockchain. This way we can easily sort transactions by account, maybe balances, or specific contracts. By doing this, we can easily trace where money goes, or what account interacts with which contract in a visually pleasing way. Etherscan is the main website, but they've created many different versions for other blockchains including BSC Scan, Polygon Scan, and Snowtrace. Another tool I use pretty often is something called Hex to Decimal. Now this is a very simple website that converts hexadecimal numbers to decimal numbers. In development, we often see things as hexadecimal numbers, and even Ethereum addresses themselves are in hex format, and this converter is one I have personally used and recommended many times, so it had to be on the list. Finally, I have to list the Way to ETH converter. This is a tool that converts Way to GUE to ETH, and back and forth or whatever conversion you want. The standard unit of measurement on the Ethereum blockchain is one Way, which is one billionth of a billionth of one Ether. So 10 to the power of 18 Way is equal to one Ether. And in between, we have 10 to the power of nine Way is equal to one GUE. Long story short, these units have a ton of zeros, a ton of decimal places involved. So using this calculator saves a lot of errors and confusion. As I wrap this video up, if you're interested in becoming a Web3 developer, learning how to write smart contracts to create your very own dApp or score a high paying job, you should definitely check out my Web3 bootcamp. Inside of it, as you're learning things, you are also going to be creating your very own portfolio to show off what you've built. It's a 12 week program that covers everything you need to launch your own dApp, and if you're interested, you can check the link in the description below to get started. I'm closing the doors for this cohort very soon, so don't skip out if you're interested. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you've learned something. And most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.